So one of the most fundamental packs in MLB The Show 23 Diamond Dynasty is the Diamond Duo packs. Now, I finally pulled some 99s out of the Diamond Duo packs recently, but before that, I haven't really pulled anything. But regardless, these packs are one of the primary sources of content, especially on the Tuesdays where we don't get that much. But this year, they've really juiced them up compared to previous years. I'll give SDS credit on that. All of them are 99s. All of them are playable cards. And a lot of them are really good cards. But today, we're going to be putting all of them onto a tier list. You guys have shown me an amazing amount of support on these tier lists. So let's do another one. So here is my Diamond Duos tier list. For the D tier, we have five cards. We have the Gold Glove Brooks Robinson. We have Don Sutton, Ozzie Smith, Robin Yount, and Walter Johnson. So starting out the D tier, we have Brooks Robinson. Now look, all of these guys in Diamond Duos are 99 overalls, and all of them are going to be serviceable for your team, but not all of them are as good as the other, and that's the point of this tier list, is all these guys are usable, but Brooks Robinson is one of the worst out of the Diamond Duos, because he doesn't really have a good swing. He doesn't really have, like, look, he has max out contact versus lefties, and he has 109 versus righties, but he has 99 clutch, which cancels that out, basically. 86, 82 power. He is really good defense, but there are so many players who have really good defense and much better hitting than this card. Don Sutton is another guy who's going to be in D tier. Now, he has 103 hits per nine, 108 pitch and clutch, which are both good. He has good control, or he has really good control and really good break. But the thing about Don Sutton cards is they're never really good in this game, strictly because he always has horrible velocity and not that good of a pitch mix. I mean, four seam. He is the sinker, but screwball, knuckle curve, slider, it's an interesting pitch mix. Doesn't really throw hard at all. Don Sutton has never really been anyone. Like, nobody ever really uses Don Sutton, so therefore he's going to be D tier. Now, if you're looking at Ozzie Smith's player card overall, like, he is insanely good at everything. But in the grand scheme of the game, like, of Diamond Dynasty, he's not that good of a card. I mean, 110, 107 contact like 103 clutch those are his contact numbers and his power numbers are 65 71 yes he knows how to bunt so if you're a bunt cheeser you can use ozzy smith and yes he's an amazing defender and has really good speed and he's a switch hitter but like he's just such an, a pool noodle as a bat like he just can't hit at all and you need cards who can hit in diamond dynasty that's like the number one thing Robin Yount is kind of in the same boat as Ozzy Smith. He has better contact and better power, so overall he's a better hitter, and he has maxed out clutch, but he doesn't have the speed that um, that Ozzy Smith has, and he has worse defense. It's still diamond, but again, it's kind of another guy where it's like nobody really uses these guys because they never really have good cards. Like Robin Yount, the power isn't really that good, 84-78, and I know a lot of people have criticized me for tier list videos for overvaluing power, and I can understand your argument on that, but when you have so many other options that you'll see later in this video that are from the same packs, there's a reason why these guys are in D tier. The last guy for the D tier is Walter Johnson. Now, Walter Johnson, again, is another guy who nobody really uses. The issue with Walter Johnson is he was one of the greatest pitchers of all time, but he pitched so long ago. If you look at that card, it's from the 1913 season, and back then, they didn't even have, like, like, a bunch of these pitches weren't even invented. So a lot of, like, really old pitchers like Cy Young, those guys, like Christy Mathewson, they're legends, but they're never really that good in the show because they don't really have a good pitch mix. Example, four-seam sinker, curveball changeup. It's just not going to cut it. He has the velo for sure. He's an outlier, and he has pretty much everything else. But when you have a horrible pitch mix, it ruins the whole card. For the C tier, we have Dontrell Willis. We have G Money, who is G Man Choi. We have Joe Morgan, Luis Severino, Rod Carew, and Gavin Lux. Starting off the C tier, we have Dontrell Willis, who is better than the guys below him. Like, he's better than Don Sutton. He's better than Walter Johnson. 98 hits per nine is a little low for 99 overalls. The pitch and clutch helps him out at 104. He has elite control. I mean, that's really good control and really good break. But the thing that holds him back from the other guys is look like again this is a good card but he's in the c tier because there are better pitchers from diamond duos it, it's just a fact uh, 76 velocity it's a little low now there are some times where the velocity attribute is misleading and they still throw really hard but that's not really the case Dontrell Willis 95 on the fastball and 
Fastball, slider, changeup, curveball, cutter. Not a horrible pitch mix, but could be better. Maybe if they added a sinker, or maybe if the curveball was a slur, if this card would be better. But not a horrible card, but C tier. Now, G Money, aka G Man Choi, is a fan favorite, especially from Rays fans before he was traded to the Pirates. But look, again, like solid card 116, 115 versus righties, 101 clutch, 85, 89 versus lefties. There are better, there are guys who are better against lefties than G Man Choi. And his defense is gold, uh, but all the other stuff is kind of meh. This card is literally, it's this card is kind of the definition of a C tier, where he's good enough where he's not trash in the D tier, but he's nothing special. Joe Morgan is, the C, is a C tier card. I almost put him in the D tier because if you look at it, this card is insanely comparable to Ozzy Smith, but I like Joe Morgan better than Ozzy Smith because Joe Morgan has more power. There you go, guys. The power king strikes again, big ends gaming, but... That's pretty much the only reason why. I mean, they both have really good... They basically have the same contact, same clutch, same feeling, same speed, except Joe Morgan has a little more power, which will give him C tier instead of D tier. As much as it pains me to do this because I'm a huge Luis Severino fan and I'm a Yankees fan, I'm going to put him in C tier. This is another instance of a guy who is all right, but not amazing. 109, 103 per nines are good. The pitching clutch is 92. That holds him back. The velocity is good, the break is good, the control is very good, and the break is very good. But the pitch mix isn't too good. Four seam slider, circle change, cutter. Doesn't really have any vertical break. He only has horizontal. I mean, the circle change is, right, that, that moves horizontally, but I would like to see a slurve instead of a slider and then like a sinker, but you know, you can't really ask for much. Rod Carew is also a C tier card. This card is very similar very similar to the Joe Morgan card. Pretty much has the exact same stats, except he has more contact and clutch and vision, while he has less feeling than Joe Morgan, and a little less speed, but not a huge difference. So these cards are very similar, which means they're in the same tier, and they're both in C tier, in my opinion. Gavin Lux is the last guy in C tier. Now, Gavin Lux, he has great defensive flexibility, shortstop, second, third, and the entire outfield has diamond defense, has 92 speed, but he's not that good of a hitter. He really isn't. 117, 108 contact, 94, 78 power. You know me. That power needs to be higher if you want to be on at least B tier, A tier, or S tier. Clutch is 104. Holds him back because his contact is above that. This is It's a C tier card. I don't know what, what else to say, really. For the B tier, we have Brandon Webb, Fergie Jenkins, Max Scherzer, David Justice, Tariq Skubal, Tori Hunter, Willie McCovey, Casey Mize, and Peter Fairbanks. Starting off the B tier, we have Brandon Webb from the Arizona Diamondbacks. And the reason why I have him in B tier is, I mean, the per nines could be a little better. 96, 95, they're a little low. And the pitching clutch is 103, which helps that out. The velocity is also a little low. But honestly, the reason why he is above guys like Luis Severino and Dontrell Willis is because he has them beat on the pitch mix. Sinker, curveball, changeup, cutter, four seam is a much better pitch mix than what Willis and Severino have. And he has elite control too. So you're going to have a really good pitch mix with this card. And you're going to be dotting the corners on pinpoint with this card. The velocity and the hit in case per nine would hold him back from A tier or even S tier. Fergie Jenkins is another charisma starting pitcher that is in the B tier. This card is a little different than Brandon Webb. He has worse hits per nine, 88 hits per nine. If you have 88 hits per nine, you're not in the A tier or the S tier, flat out. Like, that's holding him back from those tiers. But I have him in the B tier instead of the C tier, because the 117 pitch and clutch helps him out with that a lot. And he has elite control, just like Brandon Webb, and really good break. Has around a little more velocity than Brandon Webb, but a tiny bit of a worse pitch mix. So it's kind of it kind of evens out with him and Brandon Webb, but I would much rather have this card than Dontra Willis or Severino. The third starting pitcher, the third charisma pitcher, is Max Scherzer, who's in the B tier. 95 hits per nine, 102 pitching clutch. I mean, this card is literally like, it's basically the same reasoning as the as the other two guys. Hits per nine is a little low. Clutch helps him out. Velocity is a little low, but he has a, like a really good pitch mix. Four seam slider, circle change, slurve cutter. If he had a worse pitch mix, he probably would have fallen down to C tier. Has really good control and break. This is This is a B tier card. Now, on paper, David Justice, it's kind of harsh for me to put him in into the B tier, but I was thinking about it, and it's like, 
when have you when has anyone ever used this card in ranked i don't ever see this card in ranked so he can't be in a tier and also the contact versus righties is a low low and the hitting stats none of them wow you they're it's very good 108 107 versus left 94 115 versus right 99 clutch holds him back a little for the lefty stats but helps him with the righty stats has good defense as well good enough speed in the outfield this is a good card but it's like nobody really uses him and I, I don't know, I, I, I'm feeling like a B tier for David Justice. Therese Scooball is another pitcher in the B tier. He is a Kaiju series card. Slider, four seam sinker, circle change, 12-6. 103 hits per nine. 99 velocity, the, con the control is very good, as you can see. And the break is very good. The pitching clutch holds, holds him back. He has outlier, no he doesn't. On paper, this would be an A tier card, but I will say with guys like this, when you're a lefty and you have a 12-6 curveball, you just have to trust me on this. I don't know why, but the 12-6, and you can say this for righties too, but I feel like this is more for lefties. The 12-6 curveball isn't really that good. I'd rather have a normal curveball or a slurve, and he doesn't have good control or break on it either. So you're really looking at a four pitch mix here, slider, four seam sinker, circle change. So that's really what's holding him back from A tier. Tory Hunter is another B tier card, and it's kind of the exact same situation as David Justice. On paper, very good card, but he doesn't really wow you in it with anything. And like, I've never seen this guy in ranked. I've never played against Tory Hunter. 106.91 versus righties, that could be a little better too. 125, 106 versus lefties is good, 116 clutch is very good 97 fielding is very good 94 reaction has speed in the 70 so this card is a it, it's a good card but he's not as good as the guys above him now willie mccovey is by far the best hitter in the b tier but the reason why i don't have him in the a tier is because he's horrible defensively and he has no secondary positions as a first baseman 112 125 versus righties amazing 94 100 versus lefties could be better. 114 clutch helps him out. But again, it's kind of just another card where like nobody really uses in ranked. And I don't want to like put these guys down because nobody uses them. But the fielding could be better. And the stats versus lefties could be better. But overall, he, he will be good for you, but not amazing. Another Tigers Kaiju starting pitcher, Casey Mize, is in the B tier. I was thinking of putting him in the A tier. But there's one reason why. So 106 hits per nine, 104 pitching clutch is great. 90 case per nine could be a little higher. The control, very good. The break is very good. Doesn't throw insanely hard. He has good enough velocity, not great velocity, which is one reason. And the pitch mix is pretty good. Four seam slider, sinker, splitter, curveball. But he's just not as good as the other guys. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. When I was making this tier list, I originally had him in A tier. And then I was looking through it and I was like, he's not really on the same level as the guys in A tier. So that's, quite frankly, the reason why I have him in B tier. Now I'm just gonna be straight up with you guys. If Pete Fairbanks had a sinker instead of a splitter, that alone would move him to A tier. This card is going to be very good. 115, 117 per nines, 101 clutch, 99 velocity, 99 break, no outlier too. If he had a sinker, that would move him to the A tier. If he had outlier, that would move him to the S tier. With the sinker, would move him to the S tier. Control and break are both really good on the four seam slider, but not on the splitter. Just really wish he had a sinker. Still a very good card though. For the A tier, we have Brian Wilson, Yuri Perez, Gary Carter, Honus Wagner. We have Big Maple and James Paxton. We have Jeff Bagwell. We have Jim Edmonds, Kittel Marte, Lance Lynn, and Ralph Kiner. Brian Wilson is the first card in the A tier. This is a very good reliever card. Four seam cutter slider, two seam. 16, or 113 hits per nine, 123 case per nine is nuts. Too bad case per nine doesn't really matter nearly as much as some other stats because it's the outer PCI. But regardless, 125 pitch and clutch, very good. 97 velocity and break, very good. Control is good, break is good. The reason why he's not in the S tier is because we have some relievers in the S tier who have a, pretty much everything Brian Wilson has, but either better or a better pitch mix. Yuri Perez is pretty much the exact same scenario as Brian Wilson. Literally does everything well. 102 hits per nine, 112 case per nine, 99 velocity, 99 break, outlier on the sinker. But his pitch mix is very good. Sinker, circle change, slur slider, could use a fifth pitch. Still a very good pitch mix. But the 92, or 96 pitching clutch, I was looking at the walks per nine. The 96 pitching clutch, 
It's not good enough for S tier. Very good pitcher, but not S tier. Gary Carter, I don't, are there any other catchers on this list? I don't really re remember, but he's a very good catcher, 116, 119 for, for his stats versus lefties. Diamond defense across the board. The reason why he's not in S tier is because his stats versus, versus righties aren't good enough at 86 and 91, and he only has 89 clutch. It's that simple. The clutch is really bad, and the stats versus righties could be better. Look, a lot of you guys are going to hate me for saying this, but I don't think this card is an S tier card because of the power. I know. I'm going to get comments on it, but Honus Wagner obviously wasn't a power hitter in his career, but he's had better cards in MLB The Show in the past with power in the 90s, which is what I was hoping for, but still does amazing 114, 118 contact. That's also lower than previous cards, but still very good. Clutch 125, very good. I mean, it's maxed out. Can get you bunts with maxed out bunting. Has diamond defense, has elite speed, and can play literally anywhere. All of this single-handedly puts him in the A tier. Literally, if the power was in the 90s, he would be in S tier. James Paxton from the Seattle Mariners is in the A tier. Four-seam knuckle curve cutter, circle change sinker. Has a good pitch mix. 100 hits per nine, 107 case per nine. Very good walks per nine, 107 pitching clutch. Control is very good, break is very good. But he's just not better than the other guys in S tier. It's it's very simple. I know I'm kind of sounding like a broken, I, I kind of sound, that's better English, I kind of sound like a broken record. But it's just the truth. Like this card isn't an S tier card. When I faced him, he's been tough, but he hasn't been insanely tough. Some of those pitches don't work as efficiently. Like the knuckle curve as a lefty is better than a 12-6, but it's not as good as you would think. Still a very good card, still A tier. Jeff Bagwell is another A tier card. 108, 102 for contact, 115 power versus right, 94 power versus left, 117 clutch. Gold defense at first base has pretty good speed too for first baseman at 63. Can't steal, but still pretty good. But he's not an S tier card. I I've said this over and over. The power versus lefties at 94. Look, the A tier cards are very good cards that will be good and ranked, but they're not the best cards in the game. This card is not one of the best cards in the game. Jim Edmonds is another A tier card, and again, there's one thing that's holding him back. It's that 93 clutch. Destroys right, he destroys righties. He is pretty good against lefties. A contact versus lefties could be better for him to be S tier as well. But this card will be very good for you, but the clutch is holding him back. He's I mean, he's an insane defender. He has 63 speed, which is good enough for the outfield. Destroys righties, but he's going to be a little weaker on the lefties, and his clutch really hurts him. Kittel Marte was one of the first guys in Diamond Duo. He was in the Diamond Duo Pack 1, and this card does a lot for you. 96, 1 and 25 contact, 87, 102 power, 114 clutch, has gold defense across the board, has pretty good speed, has five spots he can play, but the stats versus righties, they're not good enough for S tier. It's, it's literally that simple. Now Lance Lynn is another very good starting pitcher from the Charisma series. Four seam cutter, sinker, circle change, curveball. Great pitch mix. 102 stamina, 114 hits per nine, 100 case per nine. The pitching clutch is 118. The control is very good. The break is very good. But the starting pitchers are the only starting. There's one starting pitcher in S tier is better than Lance Lynn in my opinion. Strictly because of the velocity. The velocity, look, it's still 95, but the guy above him is better. The final card in the A tier is Ralph Kiner, and looking on paper, this guy is an S tier hitter. 106 contact right, 125 for contact left, power right, or yeah, power right, 116 power left. But he's not in S tier because he has 86 clutch, and he's horrible at defense. The 86 clutch, when I saw that when this first when this card first came out, I was so disappointed, man, because this card could be a really good DH, but the clutch ruins it. It ruins it. Just like Willie Mays, it ruins this card. Lastly, for the S tier, so the best of the best out of Diamond Duos, we have Aroldis Chapman, Bryce Harper, Josh Hader, Chris Bryant, Rob Nen, Tyler Matzik, Jordan Alvarez, and Yu Darvish. The first card in the S tier, and this card is on my team, is 99 Aroldis Chapman. 125, 125, 125 for hit, case per nine, and pitching clutch. 99 velocity, 99 break, outlier on the four seam. The pitch mix, very good. Four seam slider, circle change, sinker, splitter. I mean, this card is amazing. It's really good. The control, it's never gonna be good with Aroles Chapman, but he's just such a good card where it doesn't really matter as much. 
And now you guys kind of understand why I have like Brian Wilson in a guy, yeah, a guy like Brian Wilson in the A tier is because he's not on the same level as this role as Chapman. Bryce Harper, another guy in the S tier. Now you're probably thinking, he only has 90 power versus lefties. You, you, what you're saying is he's an A tier card. I would disagree with Bryce Harper because Bryce Harper has much better stats versus righties. He's better defense. He has pretty solid speed. And his swing is just butter. And honestly, I would rather have, if, if you're going to be really good against one side and not as good against one as another side i would really hope you have good clutch which he does 120 clutch pretty much the reason why i have him above like i have him above jim edmonds because of the clutch i have him above kitel Marte because of the clutch and well kitel Marte isn't nearly as good on his weak side as bryce harper is but regardless bryce harper s tier card Josh Hader is another guy in the S tier. Lefty reliever, two seam slider circle change, has outlier on the two seam. This card is not as good as a rolled as Chapman, but it's still S tier worthy. He's still better than Brian Wilson. 125 for hits per nine, ace and case per nine. 112 pitching clutch. This hurt him a little. Still very good. Still has insane velocity and break. Control is good, break is good. And the pitch mix is good enough for a lefty reliever. Chris Bryant Charisma is in the S tier, and you're probably saying, you're a hypocrite, 92 clutch. Yes, the 92 clutch hurts him, but overall, this guy is so much better than a guy like Jim Edmonds, where they have the same clutch, but Chris Bryant hasn't beat in pretty much everything else. Like, Chris Bryant can play third, first, short, left, center, and right. Edmonds can only play the outfield, or he might have first, but he can only play the outfield. Chris Bryant much better hitter in, in general. 106, 104 versus right, 121, 125 versus left. That's very good. The diamond, or not diamond, but really good defense as well with really good speed. This card is an S tier card. He's better than the guys in A tier. I don't want to hear it. Rob Nen is another S tier reliever. We have a ton of relievers in this S tier. 117, 115 per nines, 125 clutch, 99 velocity, outlier on the four seam. Control, very good. Break, very good. Four seam speed. Uh, slider, splitter, curveball. Another very good reliever. He's S tier. Tyler Matzek, another lefty reliever. 125 for hits per nine, case per nine, and pitching clutch. Four seam slider, curveball, cutter, good pitch mix. Velocity is a little low, but control is also a little low. And break is better. But this guy is in the S tier because he's maxed out for the hit, case per nine, and the pitching clutch. And he has a good pitch mix too. Jordan Alvarez is an S-tier card, 103, 125 versus right, 117, 109 versus left, 108 uh, pitch and clutch, 108 hitting clutch. The defense isn't as bad as you would think, but the reaction sucks. This card, if you put him at DH, he is insanely good. He is probably the best hitter out of every single diamond duo card that has come out. You can maybe compare him with Bryce Harper, but I honestly would take Jordan Alvarez strictly for hitting. And that alone puts you in S tier. The final guy in this tier list and the final guy in S tier is you, Darvish. He was in the Diamond Duo Pack 1 with Gatel Marte. 104 hits per 9. 111 walks per 9. 96 Ks per 9. 98 pitching clutch. 99 velocity. 99 break. The pitching clutch is a tiny bit lower, but it's still 98. If you parallel him a couple times, he'll be in the 100s. Does not have outlier, but still throws really hard. Cutter, four seam slider, sinker, splitter. Very good pitch mix, very good. Throws really hard, has insane control, and has very good break too. This card all around is the best starting pitcher to come out of Diamond Duos. I've seen him the most in ranked seasons. I He's the best starting pitcher from Diamond Duos. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys are new here, follow me on all my social medias, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. But most importantly, make sure you subscribe right here on YouTube. So yeah, see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.